Plus TV African News correspondent Mary Chinda was at Takwa Bay for the food distribution and other essentials to people badly affected by the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in Lagos, Nigeria. Her report. And it's day 12 of the Lagos lockdown with hundreds of very hungry stomachs. The Lagos State Government, partnering with Citizens for Citizens, is providing food for hundreds of Lagosians and their families just across the Lagos Island. Takwa Bay, a fishing community with predominantly fishermen and low-income Lagosians. It, it has been really, really difficult for us, all of us here. Extremely difficult because now... No job. They say the uh, uh, Lagos is lock, locked down. We can't, we can't even cross the town to do anything. So most of us do, do petty uh, business here. And no customers to buy. It is not easy. It's a tough time. And we don't pray government to send it. We don't want. People here are really suffering. From the time of demonition, a lot of people don't have home to stay. A lot of people are stranded. Some of them are sleeping in the beach. The other day they brought uh, uh, 20 cartons of Indomie here. Each of, uh, they shared it two-two per head, and it, it didn't even go quarter of people. As the people troop out in their numbers, the common denominator here is how to battle hunger within the lockdown period. It's not easy for us here because we are staying across the water. Many people in town don't know that some people like this are staying in this kind of place. So for you people to remember us, we appreciate. What's happening now, it's one of the most noble gestures that we really appreciate from kind-hearted individuals and organizations taking the time out to come and meet the needs of the people here. We had seen what the Lagos State government is doing, which is fabulous. We must commend the governor of Lagos State uh, in, 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 in the relief materials that they are, they are giving. And we thought as private citizens that there's a time when you begin to partner with government and help government to, to help reach the citizen, help do the will of the citizen. That's what we are doing as uh, citizens of Nigeria. We're not just coming to the community to feed them. Uh, we're also creating an awareness uh, on how they can keep themselves um, you know, uh, the, the basic guidelines on how to stay safe. Away from families and vulnerable individuals right here in this Taco Bay community, the fear is that social distancing may not have been adequately practiced, especially um, with a look at these children who seem to be um, gathered together. It seems that the education and what social distancing is about did not exactly get well to the families um, around here. Do you know about coronavirus? Yes. 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 Do you know about coronavirus? Yes. yes. Do you know what social distancing is? No. no. From Takwa Bay, Lagos, Nigeria, Mary Chinda reporting Plus TV Africa. Joining us in the studio is Plus TV Africa news correspondent Mary Chinda. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you, Felicity. We also have joining us via telephone Shage Ayodeji, who is also a resident of Takwa Bay. Thank you for joining us, Shage. Thank you very much. All right, let's start with you, Mary. The, the, you even mentioned it in the reports, the lack of adequate understanding of the importance of social distancing. Um, what do you have to say um, in reaction to that? Well, a lot of work needs to be done for a country where the government values its citizens and values the lives of its citizens. Um, as it's January 1st, 2020, when we crossed over to the new year, we didn't have an idea or an inkling that, you know, a few months down the line, we were going to be battling with the uh, dreaded COVID-19. And so um, this is not something that we all budgeted for. But for, uh, if we value our, the lives of our citizens, then we have a lot of work to do to, for people that are very vulnerable. Like you and I are urban dwellers, you and I are educated people. So we know that, okay, we have to to do the the we have to use the hand sanitizers and we also have to use the nose masks you know when we when 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 we're going to, to go when we're going out but for people who are living in a vulnerable place like Takwa Bay and other places across the country you find people who know that okay there's there's covid but they, there's no there's no there's no awareness there's no practicality of the fact that look i have to stay you know some 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 meters away from the next person so there's I, I, no there's no um, um access to them getting to afford 
you know, hand sanitizers or even nose masks. And it's not their fault. It's because they don't have the money. They can't afford it. Okay, aside these um, social distancing and all that, what, what else struck you about the, um, the reports and the environment? What struck me is that Taco Bay is on the other side of the island. It's a very vulnerable place. It's a place where where Nigerians who you know who live below um, one dollar per day, you know leave. These are places where you see people who, who are struggling to earn a living or to even food, put food on their tables. And now they have to, like the rest of, of the country, battle with the COVID-19. Now, in the, in, the, in the bit of that report, I found someone who said to me that, look, some people came here and they brought Indomie to us. Indomie, little sachet of Indomie, and they were sharing it for one or two per family. Now, we're talking about a family that has husband and wife and children. How are they supposed to cope? Okay, we'll, we'll come to you in a bit. Let's talk to um, Shagir. Shagir, are you with us? Yes, I'm with you. Okay, um, what is the situation like right now? Were you a recipient of the uh, palliative? Uh, actually, I want to thank... Uh, the local government uh, chairman, Honorable Arisha Abdu, that uh, in these 14 days of lockdown, she has uh, come to give us some relief materials in uh, Takwa Bay and other communities around the riverine area. Also, in terms of uh, relief materials, also, it's not going to be enough because we have a lot of population around the uh, riverine area here. And uh, actually, President, as I'm talking to you now, a lot of families are still suffering. We have close to about uh, 400 to 500 families within an, uh, a community named Ogogoro Community. In Takwabe, I think last Saturday, a group of NGOs came down to distribute relief materials to them. And they are very happy about it. Uh, I want to use this medium also to ask the government or any NGO involved to come down to Ogogoro community and assist this family. We have more than 500 families here. Okay, so, so our, our, our report... Government... Go ahead, go ahead. Hello. Yes, I'm with you. I was just going to ask you that um, our reporter who was there noticed that there was... Um, there was no compliance with the social distancing advice. How aware are the people of that community, do you think, about the importance of social distancing and basic hygiene? Yes. Um, the, an NGO called Slum to School have a tank trial in each of these communities that uh, they are trying to educate the people on how they should keep a social distance between themselves and also to stay at home, and also to wash their hands to, uh, to avoid the so-called virus, the coronavirus. So the NGO came up with some idea of uh, assisting some youth to be doing that in the communities. I think they have close to about six, seven communities that are doing that. So that is what the NGO is doing. Slum to School came to do. Aside from these NGOs and your local government chairman, what other government um, palliatives have you seen? Uh, I, let us be sincere to ourselves. I've not seen any other government uh, agencies or anybody coming down to these communities to assist them. But I want to thank Lost TV for this uh, great opportunity for them to even come down to the river and come to see the people. They have really tried at least to come and see what other people are doing, how suffering they are doing, and also the, the, the way they are living. Them coming, they came, they saw everybody in the community that they need help. So I want to thank Plus TV for that. And also, please, I'm begging people to use this medium to get to the government to come and get down to these people down here because they are really suffering. All right, um, Shege, thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you. All right, back to you, Mary. Um, you heard his appeal. What are the limitations, do you think, for such uh, palliatives being given by NGOs? Well, 
the the major limitation is that um, of course the the food in itself that you're distributing is probably just going to take a family of two or a family of four you know a few days and then of course it's you you have to you know constantly come to their rescue but my point is away from the food away from you know just taking food to them can we ensure that we are sensitizing them can we give them food and give provide them uh, nose marks and provide them hand sanitizers look the point is yes we have to feed our hungry stomachs right but there's also the danger of the virus there is a danger of the virus. So in the middle of, you know, trying to get food, you know, and people are not maintaining social distancing, people are not even caring for themselves, you know, the, we have to emphasize that, look, I have to, I'm giving you food and I'm also sensitizing you. I'm giving you the hand sanitizer. I'm giving you the nose mask. I'm giving you all the education that you require to ensure that we can battle this virus together. Thank you very much, Mary, Thank for coming so on the news. For